This is a case of a 34 year old male. He suffered from a left Achilles tendon rupture about a week prior to seeing me. What's interesting about this case is he had an MRI which showed a gap of about three and a half centimeters between the two ends of the tear. However, I was able to do dynamic imaging using ultrasound which demonstrated a gap of only about a millimeter when he was in plantar flexion and only a couple of millimeters when he was not in plantar flexion. An ultrasound in this case can certainly change the management of the patient as we treated him conservatively. If you just went by the MRI findings, you may be more inclined to operate on the patient given the large gap that was noted. However, the gap was essentially much smaller as demonstrated by ultrasound and dynamic imaging. Here we're going to first review some basic anatomy. We're starting basically just from the bony layer here. And we're going to focus on the posterior compartment of the leg. Here are some of the neurovascular structures involved in this portion of the lower extremity and here's the deep compartment of the leg and now we're rotating you can see the anterior compartment and the lateral and back to our posterior compartment here's our soleus muscle and above that is the medial lateral gastrocnemius muscles here you can see of the soleus muscle essentially fades into the Achilles tendon and ultimately becomes the medial aspect of the Achilles tendon as it changes direction as it progresses distally. Here's our Kager's fat pad. And here's this injury of this patient a couple of inches from the insertion on the calcaneus where the full thickness tear of the Achilles. Ultrasound basically showed that the edges of the tear were not too far apart from each other. You can see the plantaris tendon here in the medial aspect of the Achilles. And also you can appreciate some thickening and tendinosis of the distal aspect of the Achilles tendon. And when you passively plantar and dorsiflex the foot, you can see how the edges of the tear can abut each other and become closer to each other. And with dorsiflexion, the ends become further apart, and then with passive plantar flexion, they essentially approximate each other. Here again, here's a lateral view of this injury as well. Thirty-four-year-old male walking down a ladder about a week ago. As he was walking down, he felt like someone hit him in the back of his Achilles tendon. Classic for Achilles tendon rupture. He's a positive Thompson. And my finger does fall into a gap, kind of near the musculotendinous junction. That's where he's tender. And here's some sagittal MRIs, which you can clearly see a tear. Uh, easy to see on the fat saturated image on the right, where you have all that signal. It was read as a gap of about three and a half centimeters. Here's an axial view, where you can see all that signal within the Achilles uh, consistent with the tear. Ultrasound here, sagittal view shows retrocalcaneal bursitis. The distal Achilles tendon is fairly well preserved. And you can see the probe on the, in the middle picture, basically the probe is going up proximally on the Achilles tendon. And as we approach the tear, you'll be able to see clearly a discrete break within the Achilles tendon consistent with a full thickness tear. What's interesting is this is only a gap of a couple of millimeters, perhaps three or four millimeters. And then when we actively move him, when we plant or flex him, we can reduce that gap to about one millimeter. Here we are in axial view. Distal Achilles tendon looks fairly well preserved, and as we go proximal, we can see that tear. And here we are essentially in the zone of the tear. We have all that black and dark signal, which is essentially blood uh, filling up that gap. And here we are, we're doing some active motion, and you can see the two ends of the tear basically come within about a millimeter of each other. And this is why we were able to treat him conservatively, and he did quite well. If we just went by MRI, we may be more inclined to treat him operatively. Seven weeks into our Achilles injury, he's been wearing a rocker bottom Achilles boot, full weight bearing, going to physical therapy for the past three weeks, and he's feeling better. Let's see if we can do our Thompson test here. Okay. So it's connected. And here's some follow-up MRIs where you can see the thickening and irregularity of the Achilles tendon consistent with healing. And 
and here's our follow-up ultrasound, which is consistent with his MRI findings. Here with some motion, you can actually see some movement of the deep flexors of the foot. Still some scarring, I think, is keeping that Achilles tendon somewhat tacked down. And it still shows some retrocalcaneal bursitis seven weeks out of the injury.